Today we're going to talk about part three of famous 1970s Speedway riders who have tragically fallen. And you know, life is short and you know, these people who they became our heroes and then tragically something happened to these people and they passed away. And like I say, life is short, it's fragile. And you know, Speedway riders are no different than anyone else. We tie our shoes the same way and we live and we pass away. And some people, it's just very difficult to understand why this happens. And today we're going to talk about one of the famous Speedway riders who started in the 1970s, the late 1970s. And I had a chance to race with him a few times and he was a charger. And he gained his fame really in the 1980s. That's when he really came into his own. And today we're going to talk about Kelly Moran. Rest in peace. I first saw Kelly at Saddleback Park, like 72. And I was racing just as a very young boy. And Kelly Moran was there with his brother, Sean. And they had that beautiful leathers, the white and the green leathers with the clovers, the green clovers on the sleeves. And they looked like a million bucks. And they had good motorcycles. They were in advanced classes because the Moran brothers, they not only had nice machinery and leathers, but they had a good skill as well. They were natural riders. And at that track at Saddleback, it was kind of like a TT track. There was a lot of turns, a lot of sliding, and the Moran brothers excelled there. I was also a racer at the time, and I just had my Levi's and some boots and a helmet. My dad, he painted a green, like green hornet on my green helmet. It was kind of a crazy thing. And then I would look at some of these high class riders like the Moran brothers. They were all decked out first class. And I noticed that the Moran brothers had a really great father who supported them, who was by their side, who assisted in helping them. And I pretty much was alone. That's why I did not have a lot of support. But the Moran brothers and Kelly also was destined for greatness. Ed Schaefer, a Speedway Research, he developed a junior Speedway bike. I think it was like a McCullough engine. He built that for Bruce Penhall, and I think he built it for the Moran Brothers also. And the Moran Brothers, they were racing during intermission on the Speedway track, and they were good sliders. Uh, they interviewed Kelly, and he said that they didn't excel in motocross because they just didn't like jumping. And a lot of us Speedway riders... We really like to slide and not do the jumps. And the Moran brothers were no different. They were expert sliders and not good jumpers like some of us Speedway riders were. But they just excelled and they were just future stars. And they raced during the intermission at the uh, Costa Mesa Speedway. And you could tell that those kids really had it going for them. And they were future stars. After I had started racing, uh, Kelly Moran quickly came into Speedway and he just popped straight into pretty much Division One uh, with his brother, Sean. And they were, they were very competitive. I noticed that Kelly had smoked a lot and I noticed that, you know, nonstop he was smoking cigarettes. And I was like, that's probably not good for your health. What happened, Kelly, several years later, he developed some illnesses as a result of heavy nicotine. And eventually that led to his passing. And Kelly Moran, he went ahead and told people like, stay away from cigarettes and stay away from alcohol also. And try to keep your body clean because the body is a very fragile thing. Like I mentioned, Kelly gained his fame in Europe. He raced on the whole Vikings, several British league teams. He raced in the world championship. He got a few fourth place finishes right off the podium. And Kelly Moran was just a hard charger. He could ride that long track pretty fast and he just let it loose. And you know, he was one of the famous riders and he was so little, he's a little guy. And, he just was an amazing talent. 
And it's really sad that his passing so young at age 50, you know, he had so much to give back to Speedway. And, you know, Kelly was beloved around the world because Kelly was just a fantastic human being. He was a good person and he was a happy guy. And even guys like Kenny Carter, who didn't really like a lot of the American writers. I asked like Larry Costa, one of the writers of the Aces, who I used to race all the time against, we're good friends. And I asked him, why did uh, Kenny, uh, I asked Larry Costa, why did Kenny Carter like the Moran brothers and, and Kelly Moran so much? And they said, because he was such a nice guy and got along. Kenny Carter just did not like anyone who was competing with him, like Penn Hall and most of the American team. I don't want to pick sides or anything, but Kenny Carter was a fierce competitor and he just didn't really like the Americans. And the Americans just really didn't like Kenny Carter. But Kenny Carter liked one top American, especially two of them. And that was the Moran brothers, Sean and Kelly. You have to be a fantastic spirit rider to win two United States championships in the 80s. And like I say, that's when Kelly Moran excelled in the 80s. And then um, kind of he stopped racing in maybe about the 90s. He slowed down and... Uh, I finally saw Kelly Moran in the 2000s, uh, shortly before he died, around 2006, 7, and 8. He used to come to the pits at Costa Mesa Speedway when I was racing, and he was outside the fence. I don't understand why. I, he told me he wasn't allowed in the Speedway races. And I'm like, what? And I guess he was trying to get in for free. He didn't have the money, and he was not allowed in the races for free, he had to pay. So Kelly Moran would sit outside the pits, outside of my pits, and he would just hang through the fence with both hands and just watch inside the pits. He loved Speedway so much. And one time I was done with the race, I was very tired, and Kelly Moran says, hey, Bumblebee, come here. And I went over and I said, hey, Kelly, how you doing, bud? And we were chatting and I said, you know, why don't you come in and watch the races? And he told me the story. And and Kelly Moran was just a giving person. He was just a, had this warm heart. He had his health problems, which eventually caused his passing. But he was just a good guy. I'll never forget what Kelly Moran said to me. Now, I was just a uh, upper support rider at the time. I was the king of support at the time. I had some good success. I decided to stay down when I got older as a spear rider. That way I could win because I knew that in Division One they would kick my butt. So I was, you know, having some success in support division. I was at the time the number one uh, support rider. And Kelly said, you know, I have to tell you something. And I said, what? And he says, you're my favorite speedway rider. And I go, what? No way, because I remember the days of Saddleback Park when I was admiring Kelly and Sean and how good they were and stuff. And then here, one of my idols is telling me, you're my favorite writer. And I told Kelly, no, 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 I'm not your favorite writer. There's so many great writers. And, and I just, I, you know, I don't believe that at all because I wasn't the best writer. I can tell you that. But I was good. But I was at nearly the best at the time. I was an older rider, just having fun, going out and enjoying Speedway. And that's the way Kelly was. He just wanted to make people feel good. And I just was shocked when he said that. And I realized he said that because he was such a good person, such a giving person. And Kelly Moran was just a good guy, good human being. And the whole world of Speedway was saddened at his passing. Around 2010, uh, a lot of the Speedway Team USA riders gathered around and supported them. Ron Preston, Dennis Segalos, Bruce Penhall, Gresham, all these guys, they adored and they were behind uh, Kelly Moran before his passing. And they supported their famous and favorite Speedway rider, Kelly Moran.